there it is. Your camp, I believe. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that you, the other you, is making his way there as we speak. Alas, this you will have to walk from here, or run if you can manage it. My lord would be cross if I made it too easy. Such ingratitude! I'd not squander this fighting chance. After all, you've obstacles enough to overcome. Right on cue. Tempered soldiers, with standing orders to kill those not sworn to anima. Under normal circumstances, you would make short work of them. But on this occasion, the odds are not so heavily stacked in your favor.
It is a miracle we were able to restrain the Tempered without suffering casualties. A welcome one. Arun, Senna, and the others have their hands full as it is. Thankfully, there are enough scales for everyone. And what of Eulus? His symptoms were particularly severe. They were, but others fared still worse, including some brought back from the Magna Glacius. As those in most desperate need take priority, it may be a while before he receives treatment. But rest assured that he will. In the meantime, we must find our missing friend. May the Fury guide you. Of all the bloody times for a disappearing act. Right when the first wave struck, we'd be fools to think it a coincidence. But where even to begin the search? No one saw him leave in the chaos, and we've no trail to follow. While I know full well he can handle himself, I worry all the same. Ah, speak of the devil. Well, time to call off the search. <laughs> Case closed. That's him, over there. Aye, twould appear so. Thou art struggling to perceive his presence. I am. Perhaps, in the aftermath of the wave, there is some residual effect interfering with my faculties, but... Where have you been? We've been worried sick! Uh, now, now. All's well that ends well. Are you alright? Are you alright? Who are you? That is all we have time for today. The effect has run its course, and back to your own bodies you must go. But where are my manners? We have all traveled so very far, and I have yet to pay my respects. Though in my defense, I was ill-prepared to receive so many uninvited guests. As such, preliminary entertainments were in order. A handful of tempered soldiers to hamper your progress. Refugees to command your attention while I siphon the ceruleum from the shadows. Particularly effective. Charitable souls that you are. You bent over backwards to aid them, heedless of the delay, predictable to a fault, and so my plan approaches completion unhindered. Anima will soon have absorbed the requisite amount of ether, and then shall come the spectacle 
to end all spectacles. The eldest and most powerful of primals will awaken, and all shall bear witness to the final days. The gods themselves will be my meal. Your dear companions my dessert. Upon this world I'll feast, and death shall follow in my wake. All your hate, all your rage, you will render unto me. For upon thy life's reel wind too many threads of fate, power, wheel enmeshed with woe. More terrible still is the attrition wrought upon thy companions, as they are swept up in the storm of thine existence. Take heart and protect them well. They will be your strength and your salvation. Thank goodness. He's awake. Perfectly fine, yes. I hope the same can be said of you. Everything in working order? That's a relief. Oh, and before I forget, thanks for coming to our rescue. Given recent events, I would be surprised if you weren't feeling a bit poorly. A hearty meal and a long rest would be my recommendation under normal circumstances, but these are anything but. If Van Daniel's boasts are to be believed, we must act quickly. Once you've blown away the cobwebs, we can discuss preparations for our assault on the Tower of Babel.
Now or never. Still. Allow me. Allow me.
Hold still. Hold still.
farewell, Varus. May the gods have mercy on your soul. Come. The other two await. This madness ends here! Oh, hush. This is the best part. defense. The shackles that bind my adversary will not be so easily broken. Hydaelyn! Feeble relic of a forgotten age! Hark! Victory is mine! Travel to the moon and break this wretched barrier ourselves. Whatever it takes. What was that? The final order issued by Anima to the Temple of Rome. Should the Empire fall, the world must share with it. Of course. Father lacked the conviction to give such a command. The abomination born of his flesh was but a puppet, and I the puppeteer. You madman! You monster! There's a funny joy in watching your flailing attempts to fight the inevitable. You're all going to die, and they're powerless to prevent it. We really must be on our way. You're welcome to give chase, provided you are content to leave comrade and tempered alike to die screaming. is yet unbroken. Zodiac remains bound.
I have shifted the flow of ether and sent the enemy far from their destination. Now, I shall divert it once more. An ally awaits, and I will deliver you unto him. Seek his aid. Restore the seal. Zodiac must not be set free. Tempered are running wild. Not only those at the tower, but those back at the camp. The others are doing their best to contain them, but the situation is growing beyond our control. Leave them to die or give up the chase. Just like Van Daniel said. You're... you're going alone? You have our trust and our faith. I pray we have yours. Our friends and the Tempered need our help. We will save as many as we can, I swear. Once we have matters well in hand, we'll join you on the moon. Until then, be careful. There's no telling what you'll find. Long, long before Dalamud was forged to imprison an Elder Primal, the eldest of them all, savior of the star, was sealed within a moon of his own. Souls sacrificed to grant him life still slumber and dream of the day he and we will be made whole. Here he waits, in this cold, barren place, his cradle and his grave. Silent lamentations and prayers of hope echo soundlessly to a sundered star, adrift and alone.
in the nick of time to savor the crowning triumph. Unbound and free at last, arise, Zodiac! Deprived of heart and will by the loss of dearest Elidimus. A creature of pure instinct. Wanting for guidance. But powerful. Oh, so powerful. More so with every passing moment. Such potential, even in this incomplete state. Still the savior who delivered a world from certain doom. So, here we stand. You know my intent. Consume the god, then the world. Stoke your fury to a raging inferno and dance among the ashes. Or perhaps you would face me here and now. A lesser but welcome amusement. Yes. A taste to whet the appetite. <laughs> spoil the moment, but might I ask that you postpone the slaughter until I've said my piece? I promise I will be brief. Do you remember when I told you that I wanted to die and take everyone with me? I meant it. Aspirations, and what sweet irony that the world's saviors will become the agents of its destruction. <laughs> Delusion! 
The dead have no power over me. You will be silent. Silence as the grave! Believe and walk in faith. Let the light of your soul shine for all to see. Not quite the outcome you'd imagined, but a fitting one nonetheless. Don't you think so, Hades?
shall be complete!
to achieve the desired effect. It would have been the same had Xenos died in my place. But what better and more satisfying way to ensure success than to take control myself? My sole regret is that you live to tell the tale. Even so, I have fulfilled my heart's desire. Let your murder mark the beginning of the end. The coming of the final day! So many lives, so many deaths. No different this. I close my eyes and slip into the dreamless slumber. A tired song and dance, routine. Always I wake. But not this time. <laughs> Nothing left unsaid. Nothing left undone. Inherit my hell. I intone with glee. The man I was would weep for what I have become. The all-consuming contempt. But I've the wisdom of ten millennia to justify my answer to the question. No value in their existence. Not a wit, for all that I looked, none that I did see. A final chance, then, for Hydaelyn and her faithful 
In cataclysm, prove me wrong. I sneer. All shall return to nothingness. As was your will, Emperor Zane. I, the star, and every living being consigned to your oblivion. Fulfillment in a contest with you this day. Slavering beasts gather at your gates, ravenous and eager. Already you turn to them and away from me. I must go forth once more in search of power far beyond the might of Shinryu. Power to make your heart run over with rage. For the eldest of primals was a betrayal of promise. A pathetic creature incapable of inspiring true despair. I... That's what I crave. Pure, unadulterated despair.
we shall see. It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment. But perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again.
Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? Steel currents. I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. And so they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star. Emmet Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true?
The Asians set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your word. And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the source fall, what will become of the other worlds? Yes, but what is it?
Our moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? Lively, everyone! I know, I know, this 1,243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance! For Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose, to bear the people of Aetherius to safety! Our time is come, my friend! Be swifter than swift. There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate, and don't forget to relay our signal to Etheris. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! Is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. Perhaps. Introductions are in order. 
<laughs> My name is Livingway, and we are the Lotherits, created for the express purpose of commanding this ship and bearing the people of Etheris to a brave new world. More specifically, I am the one whom she charged with the execution of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right paw. <laughs> Nothing weighs the name, map breather and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not, I shall walk you through it. The people of Etheris, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents sent you little ones on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. to speak, the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade. A calamity of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon Atheris, bringing an end to all life. Very sad, huh? So too hath the Watcher claimed. By thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. Doom and gloom. Oh, yes, quite expected. Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, a Therese in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies and resources as our stores will hold. And then, once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star. Easier said than done, admittedly, for one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need 
to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we woke to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present-day charges? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists, much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Oh, confound it all! Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization! That tome in thy possession. of your kind is contained in these pages. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but this isn't a regular-sized book, is it? Tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers-to-be.
Ready in the teleporter. to living quarters restricted due to reconstruction. And where is it? Oh no! A private audience, as thou didst request. For reasons I know not. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of thee and thine. Sentiment, really, but the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Or quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. <sighs> and so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Come again? Ah, idle musings. Tis no trifle, thou dost ask. Yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece, so... All's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again, I promise. An arrival is timely as ever.
Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? It was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? And Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life. I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Minfilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain, brokered by my hand, were the scions robbed of a dear comrade, and Flamine, her beloved daughter. Two souls, whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved, even had I thought to protest. But protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives, ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind, as does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbreather, who did face death unflinching, that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants, born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning, one which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle, haunted by ghosts of those we have lost, clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Sage counsel indeed. Wisdom as befits a great worm. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. 
and today. And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? Oh, come off it, friend. You know full well why we're here. The time has come for you to return to Etheris and help your brethren prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way, but I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. understand your purpose for millennia you and yours worked tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessels construction an arduous feat by any measure it is clear you have spared no effort why your very names are a testament to your dedication I understand what you're getting at. Names are an expression of the self, a declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. Yes! Yes! A most mellifluous reason! We Loperids were born of 
Heidelin's love for Etheris. That shining, shimmering blue jewel, brightest star in the sky, brimming with life and possibilities. For as long as I can remember, I've toiled in anticipation of the day when this vessel might be needed. All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us, don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here where we can keep them safe. If there's anything wrong with what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men and your own kin besides. Singing way. Thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Etheris are beyond counting and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits to venture unto the highest mountains and the deepest oceans in search of unknown frontiers. And thou, my friend, I... Oh, I do not think we've met. My... My name is Puddingway. Puddingway? Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure, but one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. A judicious application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. <clears throat> and living way. <laughs> Tis no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. One day, I posed to her a question of mine own. What doth it mean to live? After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. T'would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of Etheris. Made in haste, though I assure thee, the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it shall empower us to together find a way forward. I 
I hope you're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. I shall remain with the Loperitz to ensure that all is in order. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home. Which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, and I pray deeply that it won't, I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. Aye, thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind, if being the operative term. gracious of guests. Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from Atheris, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and circling back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlian Forum, yes? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say we have kept Alphino and the others waiting long enough.
Order, order, I say. I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian. Nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens. And so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talofaroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions, 
and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania. We have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. remember what mother told us when we visited home that it wasn't until after we were born that father seemed to lose himself in his work if that great work of his was the evacuation of this star then yes it wasn't for his benefit Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Thank you. I shan't be long. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't.
Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action. And there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Gallian soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, they've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. They're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Another day, another commission of paramount importance. Oh, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? that? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone, and the Garlean threat is abated. And yet, why does it feel as though it's about to get much, much worse?
Oh, apologies. I, um, I, I didn't mean to... <clears throat> if you could spare a moment before bed. Thank you. I fear this may be the last quiet night we have to talk for quite some time. I am troubled of late. Unwarranted concerns, perhaps. I hope. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to share them with you. Though you have bested your enemies thus far, Xenos and even Zodiac, your victories have come at a considerable cost to yourself. No one is without their limits, and you are no exception. I worry the added weight of the final days will prove more than you can bear. It is surely too much for any one man. But you needn't bear it alone. Let me share your burden. My, uh, carrying capacity pales in comparison to yours, but I could still help. Shoulder the occasional satchel from your ever-growing mountain of, um, baggage. You have already done so much to help relieve me of mine own encumbrances. It is only fair that I repay you in kind. Of course, it needn't be only troubles we share. Moments of joy may seem few and far between now, but there will come a time when we look back fondly on this journey. The inquiry at the Forum, our march through the snows of Garlemald, our impromptu dinner in this very room, all of it. And that is to say nothing of the journeys yet to come to the ends of the world and beyond. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, but tomorrow will be no less busy than today, and I've kept you from your rest long enough. Sleep well, my friend. <laughs>